Hello ladies and gentlemen, this presentation is to introduce you to the Omniverse Loader Node to help you simplify the authoring and integration of various Omniverse USD assets. So without further ado, let's start by dropping the Loader Node onto stage. So once we drop the Loader Node, we can see that it's mostly disabled because uh, we need to select a server. At this point, we can use this dropdown to add a server. We're going to use localhost. Okay, now that we've added localhost, we can choose it from the dropdown. When the dropdown selected to localhost, you can see that our next menu is now enabled and it's hinting us to click on the icon to browse for USD with an arrow. So we're going to go ahead and follow its hints and we're going to browse for uh, NVIDIA samples. Euclid. So now that we've loaded the Euclid uh, asset, we could see that several things changed. We see a lot more options that got unhidden and our node changed colors. It changed colors because there is a built-in pre-validation node and it's highlighting that there is an issue. Uh, if we look at the details, we could see that the root primitive needs to be world, not stage. This is not a big deal. It's just to let you know that Omniverse standards require a world root primitive. In this case, it's not critical, but it's just so you know. If we look at our stage, we could see that the Euclid VR group appeared and underneath it is the actual primitive root. You could see that actually our root is called world. So why is this complaining? Well, it's complaining because it's pre-validating the actual uh, USD file. And if we were to change this to scene instead of asset, we're now going to reload the scene using the layer uh, node in Houdini. Now, um, because layer import doesn't let you change the primitive, you could see that it's, it's forcing it to be stage. And this is, this is what this warning is talking about. Uh, again, this is not a big deal. Uh, it's just a warning. But it's a good opportunity for me to explain how the, you know, what the purpose of a scene node is. So the scene node, uh, there can only be one scene node on any Solaris stage because this acts as your root node and any subsequent nodes will parent the, themselves underneath this root. So in this case, it's going to be stage, right? So if we add another loader, right? And set it to localhost and browse for an asset. Asset, I'm going to add the tree. I like the oak tree, it's nice and big. There's a helpful kind of a hint that tells you some important things about this USD file. So for example, the, this Euclid active scene uh, is currently Z up, uh, has a Z up vector and its unit scale is in decimeters. And this tree that we just brought in uh, also has a Z up vector, but it's in centimeters. So if you look at the uh, root node, you could see that we've actually scaled it by 0.1 and we rotated it 90 degrees so that we can conform the units and the orientation of this scene into the default Houdini uh, world up, which is Y, and the default uh, unit scale, which is in meters. So we have to multiply decimeters by 0.1 in order to conform this node into the current working scale. Um, and you can see uh, this is the tree. The tree is in centimeters. Uh, if we click on the root node, right, we could see that it's been scaled to 0.1. And you might be asking yourself, well, hold on a second. Uh, why is it being scaled by 0.1? It's in centimeters. Well, it's actually being parented under the, this, uh, the root node created by this loader. And you could see that this root node is already scaled to 0.1. So, if you were to merge these together, right, you can see that this 
uh, this tree is being parented under the stage. So because stage is already scaled by 0.1 into, into, because it's in decimeters, this scale is also applying to the, to, to this as well. So we have to scale it to, again, by 0.1. Uh, so combined, this is now scaled to centimeters. So just so you know, this is how it works. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can take this Omni loader and change it back from scene into asset. And now you can see that the scene hasn't changed, but if you look at the actual structure, we can see now world, uh, we're no longer working under stage anymore. Now it's changed. The root primitive has changed to world because this is now a reference, not a layer, and we can define its root primitive. And if we look at the merge node, now we could see that Euclid is, a, uh, is scaled. World is not scaled, but the actual root of Euclid is scaled and is to point 0.1. But if you look at the tree, the tree is now scaled to point zero 0.01 because it's not being parented underneath a scaled stage. So I hope that makes sense. But basically, this allows you to mix and match uh, different units together and still have same relative scale and orientation uh, gets adapted and we can actually keep on going. We can duplicate this control V. So another thing about these drop downs. So this is kind of like the convenient way to browse for assets. This is the server and this is the root folder and the drop down shows you all of the adjacent root folders. So let's choose plant tropical, for example, and you can see that it's changed this name automatically to agave. It's a new folder. So it has different you uh like file names um and if you look at them all uh, this is probably overlapping right so let's let's move this agave out of the way and if we look at the merge node again we could see that the composited scene now has a trees group a plant tropical group and a euclid group right so so this is organizing itself based on the root folders uh, this is nice because it allows your scene to be really organized, right? So, uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, pay attention to this name. We're going to duplicate this agave and we're going to just, instead of connecting it to the merge node, we can actually daisy chain them. Uh, this node will support daisy chaining. So if we look at this merge node again, now we can see that in our plant, uh, the plant name, uh, the group has agave and agave underscore zero one. This is actually what create does as well. Uh, when you have multiple USD files of the same name, it will uh, add a incrementing value. So this actually behaves exactly like you would expect create to behave if you were to start dropping a bunch of references onto stage. And we're gonna maybe change this to something else like a some, some palm and uh, should move aside. So, so now we have this scene and we can scrub by the way to see the animation. And right now this is just a bunch of references. So let's talk about referencing some more and, and, and why we have this mode called scene. Generally speaking, as a Houdini artist, you're going to be taking some kind of asset in your pipeline and you're going to be doing some work to it. And then you're going to be, you know, either updating the asset itself uh, with, a, with a new checkpoint, or you're going to be generating some other assets. So most of the time as a Houdini artist, you're probably going to be just using a bunch of asset nodes. And they're nice because this is basically the Houdini reference node. So everything that you can do with the Houdini reference node, you can do with this loader when it's set to asset mode, right? So uh, you can choose your prefix. And this will basically, um, I'm going to choose both of them and I'm going to change the prefix. Yeah. I'm going to change these, both of them to custom prefix, which is blank right now. And if you look at this merge node again, you can see that now the hurricane palm and the agave, right? They're just parented on the world. Uh, it's, you can, you can actually, or you can type something here like test. Both of these are now parented under test. So why would you want to use the scene mode loader? If we change this into scene, like visually nothing happens, but the structure, the structure here 
has changed, right? So all of a sudden now we have stage again, and we can see that all of these other nodes are being now parented not under world, they're being parented under stage. Another thing is only one loader can have the scene designation because it is the root of your stage. So if you were to select some other node now and try to use the dropdown, you can see that you can't change this. You have to actually take this back into an asset and then you'll be able to make this tree the, the root scene, essentially. We don't want to do that because uh, this, this is an actual scene. It has a camera, it has lights. And this brings me to my second point. I'm going to do a load layer for editing. And I'm going to um, change this from root selector to file browser. So, so this basically allows you to browse for USD assets using the traditional uh, file browser without any of this fancy, you know, uh, helpers. And uh, this allows you to use things like, you know, expressions and various things that you would typically want to use if you were building um, some kind of custom rig. Uh, I just did it so I can copy this path, right? Or, or I can just actually just copy like that, copy parameter. And I can now paste this here. So I'm going to do paste values. And so now we've just loaded this layer and you can see that, well, <laughs> it's rotated on its side. We're working in, in Y up, and this is in, it's in Z up. And uh, it's black because you need to operate all of its lights to be compatible with Solaris. So we're gonna do a light uh, legacy, where is it? Upgrade old light primitives. So this is a node that we provide uh, that you can upgrade all of these lights in here and as soon as you that uh, do that you're gonna see that uh, it's really bright but to make sh uh, long story short uh, omniverse light units are in centimeters and Houdini's light units are in meters and if you were to just try to use lights out of omniverse it's just gonna be they're gonna be way too bright uh, and so this omni loader node uh, it knows the scale of the Houdini if you go into the settings, you can see that this is the current units, right? Up, up. This is the up vector, and this is the current units. And if you were to change this, this will actually change the Houdini settings, right? This will actually change. So if I change, if I make this Z up, if you look at this this gizmo, you can see that now we have Z up. The scene has now been set. So now if we look at this at this layer, now it's facing the right direction, right? Um, but you know, as a VFX artist, I don't really like to change my up vector in, in Houdini, and I don't want to change my units any, uh, uh, from meters because a lot of Houdini effects are, you know, they're kind of set up for meters. So to avoid that headache, I'm just going to keep this at Y up, and I would rather orient my USD assets to match my Houdini setup. Uh, and you notice that my camera keeps on getting changed. Uh, that is because right now I have the set cam checkbox. It's enabled. If I were to uncheck this, then this node will not try to update my camera selection. I like it, so I keep it on because uh, if you are browsing through a bunch of shots, um, you know, uh, you may want your camera to automatically update as you're looking at different shots. Uh, and uh, I also like to use the root selector because I just like this ability to be able to change. For example, let's say I want to change my adjacent root to astronaut and it'll automatically select the astronaut uh, scene, right? Because it's the only one. Uh, and then uh, you can see that it's really bright, but you, you want to check this, this, this lighting mode because this, this actually enables shadows and advanced lighting features. And now this is looking pretty close to what you would see in Create. Um, as a matter of fact, let's, let's open up. I have Create open. Now it's not gonna look 100% the same. Um, all I'm trying to do is get something for you to work in the viewport and not have everything blown up. And usually um, whenever we export, all of these light settings will be reset anyway. So you know, like you can actually adjust the lights, right? Right. So you can darken or do whatever, play with the exposure. But generally speaking, that's just for viewport. It's not. It's not meant for you to to alter the the lighting environment. So I'm gonna go back to Euclid, 
Okay, and it will automatically see it updates the camera because uh, this this is checked and because this VR kit camera is the default active camera in Create. So now we have our scene back the way it was. Um, another thing that's useful that this node does is if you go into settings, there is a set range button. And press set range. Now it's set to the to the USD range, and this is great. But now we want to export this uh, back into create. So for that, we're going to use a, a uh, Omniverse USD route node. So for this, we have a validator node. So, so the Omniverse validator is actually embedded inside of each one of these loaders. This is why they're changing colors. And the validator has uh, an option, right? By default, it's in post, but it also has a pre mode and this free mode is what's what's uh what's being applied inside of these uh loaders so we're going to change this to post the default settings and it has a has a deconform button and revert lights and that and these things do exactly what they say they will they will revert all of these scene settings and make the lights the way they were before you know you tweak them with the with the with the loader so now you can see that things got really bright because now the lights have been reverted back to their original brightness. And if you look at the at the stage, you can see that this conform value, the rotations are zeroed out and the scale conform is set to one. Uh, and now um, if you can you can write this out. Right, just gonna just gonna save the disk. Uh, oh, oh yeah, and we probably wanna render out the frame range, right? Uh, just yeah, render out the frame range, right? It's automatically set and just save save to disk. And there you go, Barrett's our scene. And you can see that go into our animation timeline. You see that the frame range is set and all our trees are here. And it's basically matching uh, the original lighting because we reset the lighting to the way it was. And there you go, you're done. And if you look at this organization, here's our trees and our plants right here. And our, you know, this is the original scene as it was. This concludes this brief uh, introduction to the Omniverse Loader node and the Validation node. I hope that this node will be useful for your projects and you can also dig into it and see how it was assembled and uh, customize it and make your own production tools that conform to the Omniverse standards and expand uh, the functionality to suit your production workflows. Thank you.